Welcome to Megaten. I am Monica. And I am David. A quick reminder, please give us a like, hit the bell, and subscribe to our channel. You can also join the VIP front row to get early access to all our upcoming videos. Thank you for being here and supporting us. Okay, David. I've been thinking about how this new MasterCard and Ripple collaboration could completely reshape how money actually moves behind credit cards. It feels like we're witnessing the start of an entirely new payment infrastructure, where blockchain and stablecoins finally intersect with traditional rails. You're right, Monica. What's happening right now is one of those moments where the back end of global finance starts quietly evolving, even while the front end, the tap of a card or an online checkout, stays the same. The partnership between MasterCard, Ripple, WebBank, and Gemini is the first real-world attempt to settle everyday credit card transactions using a regulated stablecoin, RLUSD, on the XRP ledger. And that's what makes it so interesting. It's not about speculation or trading. It's about infrastructure. RLUSD, being issued under a New York trust charter through WebBank, brings something regulators have wanted to see for years, a stablecoin that acts like a compliant digital dollar, fully backed by cash and U.S. treasuries, and capable of being redeemed one-to-one. -one. Exactly. What stands out here is that RLUSD isn't trying to replace the dollar. It's digitizing it. It's like taking the reliability of a U.S. bank deposit and merging it with the speed of blockchain. And the XRP ledger, with its 3 to 5 second settlement time, allows MasterCard's ecosystem to compress what used to be multi-day clearing cycles into instantaneous settlement. That's huge for liquidity management. Traditionally, MasterCard's clearing system runs on a batch model. Authorizations happen instantly, but settlement can take one or two business days, sometimes longer for cross-border flows. That lag locks up capital for issuers and acquirers. By shifting to RLUSD-based settlement on XRPL, they're essentially cutting the float time down to seconds. It also reduces credit exposure. When settlement becomes atomic, meaning funds move at the same time obligations are matched, there's no room for counterparty risk in the traditional sense. For MasterCard, that means less reliance on correspondent banks. For WebBank, it means real-time reconciliation. For regulators, it means more transparency. Transparency is a big point. On XRPL, every RLUSD movement is visible and auditable. Regulators like FinCEN and the OCC can literally track settlement flows on-chain. That's a compliance dream compared to the opacity of legacy netting systems. It also satisfies the anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist financing checks that institutions must uphold. Right, and that's where the Genius Act comes in. It basically gave legal clarity in the U.S. for banks and their subsidiaries to issue payment stablecoins under federal supervision. Ripple built RLUSD around that framework so WebBank can confidently operate within OCC guidance. It's not a shadow financial instrument, it's an approved structure. I find it fascinating how MasterCard's multi-token network ties into this. They've been developing it as a platform that connects both public and private blockchains. It's a sort of interoperability layer for tokenized assets, letting banks and fintechs transact across different ledger environments without losing regulatory control. The integration with RLUSD takes that vision a step further. Instead of MasterCard creating its own closed network, they're plugging into a public chain that already supports tokenized assets natively. The XRP ledger becomes the settlement layer, while MasterCard maintains its governance and interchange framework on top. That's clever, because it keeps MasterCard's role intact. They remain the orchestrator of compliance and merchant relationships, but they don't have to own the settlement infrastructure. They're using a Ripple's ledger to execute finality and WebBank's regulated issuance to keep the entire process compliant. And Gemini's role shouldn't be overlooked either. They're the liquidity hub in this setup. Gemini provides the market depth, the conversion between USD and RLUSD, and even integrates RLUSD directly into their credit card ecosystem. That's how users will experience it. They'll spend in USD, but behind the scenes, the settlement moves in RLUSD on the XRPL. It's quietly revolutionary. The consumer sees no difference, charges still appear in dollars, but for the institutions, the difference is night and day. Instead of waiting for daily or multi-day netting cycles, funds can be settled in seconds. Merchants could see faster payouts, acquirers could reduce capital buffers, and issuers gain immediate liquidity. And MasterCard has hinted at something that might become even even more transformative, programmable interchange. Traditionally, interchange fees are fixed percentages, maybe around 2%. But with programmable logic on a blockchain, those fees could dynamically adjust based on liquidity, risk, or even transaction type. That's an intriguing idea. Smart contracts adjusting interchange in real time depending on liquidity conditions or FX volatility. It would make the system far more adaptive and potentially cheaper for merchants during off-peak times. It's automation meeting financial infrastructure. Think about how that contrasts with Swift's model. Swift sends messages but doesn't move money. XRPL actually moves value. When you eliminate intermediaries, the system shifts from messaging about money to settling money itself. 
That's where RLUSD comes in. It carries the dollar value natively on the ledger. Just a reminder, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And also don't forget there is a front row seat waiting for you. Join us here at the VIP area. Thank you, David. And yet, this doesn't mean SWIFT disappears overnight. ISO 20022 still plays a major role. What's interesting is that XRPL is already compatible with ISO 20022 structured data, so the messaging layer can remain intact while the actual value settlement happens on-chain. It's like combining the best of both worlds, structured compliance data with atomic settlement. The architecture is elegant. MasterCard's existing tokenization framework, where they replace sensitive card data with secure tokens, can remain exactly as is. What changes is the clearing layer. Instead of traditional ACH or Fedwire movements, the settlement instruction triggers an RLUSD transfer on XRPL. It's an invisible substitution that accelerates everything underneath. And because WebBank is FDIC insured, every RLUSD token corresponds to real, insured cash or short-term treasuries. That's what gives it credibility. Institutions know that behind the token is a legally recognized bank deposit. It's quite different from algorithmic stablecoins or offshore models. There's another layer here, the liquidity routing capability of XRPL. The ledger's pathfinding feature can find the optimal route for a transaction, even across multiple currencies or tokens. So if one party doesn't directly hold RLUSD, XRPL can automatically bridge through XRP or another asset and deliver equivalent value instantly. Which means MasterCard could, in theory, settle multi-currency flows without maintaining Nostril accounts or relying on FX intermediaries. The system can handle that through on-ledger conversions. Imagine the savings on operational costs and foreign exchange spreads. And that's why analysts are calling this a possible prototype for a private sector RTGS, real-time gross settlement. Instead of being operated by central banks, it's run by a consortium of regulated private entities. Ripple provides the ledger, MasterCard manages governance, WebBank ensures reserve backing, and Gemini provides liquidity. It's the evolution of money movement from institutional hierarchy to network coordination. Everyone remains within regulatory boundaries, but settlement becomes as fast as information flow. What also stands out is that MasterCard doesn't need to overhaul its user experience. Merchants still get paid in their chosen currency, customers still pay in fiat, but everything beneath is upgraded. The idea is that blockchain becomes an invisible rail, not a user-facing disruption. That's important because mainstream adoption depends on familiarity. The average consumer doesn't want to think about ledgers or tokens. They just want reliability and speed. This setup achieves that without changing how they pay. True, and from the compliance side, XRPL's auditability gives regulators a level of transparency that traditional systems simply can't. Every RLUSD transaction can be traced, and any potential anomaly can be flagged in real time. It could redefine how regulatory reporting works, moving from periodic audits to continuous oversight. And that might even help rebuild regulatory trust in blockchain-based systems. One of the biggest criticisms of crypto has been opacity in stablecoin backing and flow monitoring. Here, everything is visible and the backing is verifiable under bank-level supervision. Another interesting angle is how this could influence MasterCard's competitors. Visa has been exploring stablecoin settlement with other partners, but this collaboration sets a high bar. It's the first time a regulated U.S. bank is using a public blockchain to settle fiat credit card payments. It's going to pressure Visa and others to accelerate their own strategies, especially as MasterCard has been public about its multi-token network being designed to handle stablecoins, CBDCs, and tokenized deposits simultaneously. This pilot with RLUSD demonstrates how that vision translates into practice. It also shows that traditional payment networks are no longer competing with blockchain, they're merging with it. Instead of seeing it as a threat, they're treating it as infrastructure. Exactly. And the Ripple side benefits too. RLUSD gets instant institutional legitimacy, backed by MasterCard's global reputation and Gemini's market presence. That strengthens its position as a benchmark for compliant stablecoins. Let's also talk about the regulatory implications. The OCC interpretive letters 1170 through 1183 outlined what banks can and can't do with digital assets. Those letters legitimized holding stablecoin reserves, settling payments with digital tokens, and even participating as validator nodes. The MasterCard pilot sits neatly within that legal boundary. And it might even push regulators to formalize new categories, like tokenized bank money. RLUSD doesn't fit neatly into existing definitions of stablecoins or e-money. It's effectively a tokenized form of a deposit issued by a bank operating on a public ledger. If regulators adopt that language, it could pave the way for more banks to issue their own digital liabilities, interoperable across ledgers. That's where a multi-stablecoin clearing network becomes possible. Each bank issues its own token, but settlement happens in a shared environment. 
That would be the logical next step after this pilot, a consortium model where multiple issuers coexist, governed by common rules. MasterCard could manage the governance layer while the XRPL acts as the shared infrastructure. And each stablecoin could have its own custodian and audit firm. The model would ensure segregation of reserves, daily reconciliation, and cross-issuer interoperability. It's a vision of the tokenized economy that still feels familiar to regulators. But, of course, this comes with challenges. There are questions around scalability. XRPL can process about 1,500 transactions per second, while MasterCard handles tens of thousands. For full-scale deployment, they'll need to either optimize batching or extend the ledger's throughput capacity. That's true, though for now, this is a pilot, not a production overhaul. The idea is to test feasibility, identify regulatory friction, and gather data. It's the foundation for scaling later. And I think what makes it compelling is that each participant in this ecosystem has a defined role. Ripple provides the tech, MasterCard manages network logic, WebBank guarantees reserve integrity, and Gemini ensures market liquidity. Each piece complements the other. Just a reminder, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And also, don't forget, there is a front row seat waiting for you. Join us here at the VIP area. Thank you, Monica. Okay, it's a model of collaborative finance rather than competitive disruption. You can sense how this could evolve into a permanent fixture of financial infrastructure. You mentioned earlier the potential for programmable credit. That's another area where RLUSD could quietly revolutionize things. If WebBank's credit issuance is collateralized in RLUSD, those credit lines could be managed algorithmically on-chain. It could even allow credit limits, repayments, and interest adjustments to be executed automatically. It's almost like the credit line itself becomes a smart contract. The issuer can adjust terms in real time and repayments become on-ledger transfers rather than accounting entries. For regulators, that's unprecedented transparency. And it ties back to consumer protection, too. Programmable credit would require clear disclosure and explainable logic, but it could drastically reduce errors and disputes. Everything is deterministic. No hidden processes, no overnight batch reconciliation. That's right. But for now, MasterCard and WebBank are playing it safe. They're using blockchain settlement but keeping the consumer experience untouched. Over time, as regulators become more comfortable, we might see the programmable elements emerge more visibly. Another factor is international adoption. The Financial Stability Board recently warned that traditional cross-border payment systems won't meet the G20's efficiency targets by 2027. That opens the door for alternatives like RLUSD on XRP, which can settle globally without correspondent chains. And we're already seeing SWIFT exploring similar blockchain pilots, but they're still layered on top of old systems. Ripple and MasterCard are bypassing that entirely. It's a cleaner architecture. That's the pattern across fintech evolution. Each layer gets replaced by something simpler yet more transparent. The beauty here is how it keeps regulatory comfort while delivering innovation. Speaking of comfort, let's not ignore risk management. WebBank will need robust capital buffers to handle RLUSD issuance, liquidity stress testing, and real-time monitoring of settlement accounts. Regulators will want assurance that the reserves are segregated, audited, and redeemable on demand. That's a fair concern, but it's also what differentiates this pilot from earlier stablecoin projects. RLUSD operates under NYDFS oversight with monthly attestation reports. It's not offshore or opaque. The transparency actually builds resilience. Absolutely. And MasterCard's involvement means operational standards will be high. Redundancy, failover systems, compliance audits. The same rigor that applies to its legacy networks will extend to blockchain-based settlement. What's fascinating, David, is how this experiment could gradually evolve into a multi-issuer ecosystem. Imagine RLUSD working alongside USDC, a future Visa token, or even a central bank digital dollar, all coexisting on shared ledgers interoperable through smart contracts. It's the future of liquidity layering. Instead of banks managing reserves in silos, they'd operate through a shared custody grid, each stablecoin issuer maintaining segregated assets while networks handle routing and conversion automatically. And that leads to another subtle shift. Banks moving from correspondent relationships to consortium-based liquidity pools. It's a cooperative rather than a bilateral model. That could also help smaller financial institutions participate more effectively. They'd gain access to on-chain liquidity without needing expensive correspondent networks. It democratizes access to global settlement. And all of this happens quietly without disruption. 
disrupting end users. That's the brilliance of it. We're talking about a major systemic change happening under the surface of everyday transactions. The consumer just sees faster refunds, instant settlements, and possibly better credit rates. But the underlying architecture is what's truly transformative. Just a reminder, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And also, don't forget there is a front row seat waiting for you. Join us here at the VIP area. Thank you, Monica. About MasterCard's multi-rail settlement. It's designed to handle multiple currencies and payment types, ACH, cards, and even real-time payments. That mirrors XRPL's pathfinding logic, which finds the most efficient liquidity route for value transfers. Both systems are effectively solving the same optimization problem, but from opposite ends. MasterCard from the traditional banking side, XRPL from the decentralized network side. Exactly. And that's what makes this convergence natural. MasterCard's multi-rail approach ensures flexibility, and XRPL provides the underlying settlement speed. Together, they create a structure where liquidity and compliance can coexist seamlessly. One more thing worth noting is how MasterCard retains control over interchange and compliance while removing itself from direct custody of funds. They become a governance layer, verifying rules and settlement conditions without holding the assets. It's a shift from being a processor to being an orchestrator. That's a subtle but powerful evolution. MasterCard doesn't need to manage reserves. They just validate that transactions meet their network standards, then allow the blockchain to handle the money movement. And that also means regulators can monitor the process end to end. It's a fusion of transparency and trust. Which could influence how future regulations are written. Instead of treating digital assets as risky outliers, regulators might start defining frameworks for digital settlement assets that sit between stable coins and traditional deposits. If that happens, RLUSD could become a reference model for the entire industry. Its design, fully reserved, bank-issued, publicly auditable, fits everything regulators have been asking for. And Ripple's acquisition of G-Treasury fits perfectly into this picture. They're now directly connected to corporate treasury departments, which manage trillions in working capital. That could accelerate institutional adoption of stablecoin-based settlement, especially for large enterprises tired of delayed cash cycles. It's all part of a broader reconfiguration of finance, from delayed, batch-based settlement to instant 24-7 liquidity. The MasterCard Ripple Web Bank Gemini Consortium is simply the first major proof of that concept. And it's not just a technology story, it's a regulatory milestone. For the first time, a U.S. regulated bank is using a blockchain to settle fiat card payments under supervision. That's a bridge between two worlds that once seemed incompatible. I'd say this is the most significant payments development since the introduction of chip and pin. It's invisible to the user, but revolutionary for the system. And the implications for central banks are fascinating too. If private sector networks demonstrate safe, real-time settlement with stable coins, regulators might borrow some of those principles for future CBDC design. It becomes a dialogue between private innovation and public policy. Stable coins like RLUSD could serve as test beds for the eventual integration of tokenized central bank money. And the path forward is clear now. First, pilots like this. Next, interoperability between multiple issuers. Finally, a fully digital settlement ecosystem that still feels as safe as traditional banking. It's almost poetic. Blockchain was once about disintermediation. Now, it's about better intermediation, more transparent, faster and institutionally backed. Well said, David. And that's what makes this pilot so important. It's not a disruption. It's an alignment. I agree. Everything points to a future where networks like MasterCard evolve into governance layers on top of open, regulated settlement systems. It's the merging of tradition and technology in the most natural way possible. Drop comments below and subscribe to our channel. David and I are personas to make content more engaging and relatable, not legal and financial advice. Do your own research before making any investment decisions. By the way, keep an eye on how this collaboration unfolds in the coming months. It could quietly redefine how every card transaction settles worldwide. See you next time.